Hello everyone, back to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. So day 10 is going to take us to around the 20th of December. We'll be able to extend out beyond that. We have GFS and ECM ensembles. Very much around a couple of weeks. We're going to have a look at CFS V2 and Beijing Climate saying to go into January at the end of the video. It's going to be an extended look at it. We're running quite late today. We've been doing lots lots of nice Christmas things like wrapping presents and things like that this morning. So running a little bit late. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, and yeah, I should go on for you very sure. Just say that the European Outlook has been released. So uh, that's looking at the weather uh, for the uh, next uh, uh, week, 10 days in detail uh, across Northern Europe. So have a look at that when you are done uh, with this one. That'll be absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, doing that. We had an epic live stream uh, last night where we got very close. We're just shy of like 400 concurrent viewers. Epic, epic live stream. And uh, yeah, big thank to everybody for making that the biggest live stream that we've done so far at Gals. Well, it makes you wonder what would happen if you had a beastly easy, doesn't it? How many concurrent could we get? In a beastly, I wonder. It'd be interesting to find out, wouldn't it? But thank you so much, everybody, for making last night's stream so epic. Right, so uh, let's begin with the Arctic Constellation. Then. So the black line shows where we've been uh, with the AO, red line, so the air, where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation. Go, just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric state. It's not driving anything in its own terms. just tells what the atmosphere is doing. When the air is in its positive phase, we've got low pressure up over the North Pole. Uh, conversely, when the Arctic Oscillation is in its positive phase, we've got high pressure, we've got blocking over the North Pole. And blocking is the route pushing colder out the pole and down into the mid latitudes. The AO is already negative at the moment. There it is just there. GFS ensembles are forecasting that the Arctic Oscillation will become even more negative. It'll go even more negative as we move into the second half of December. You would look at that and assume that it's a pretty good signal for turning cold. Because obviously if the AO is that negative as it's weather tries the index, there is going to be appreciable levels of blocking uh, within the Arctic. Of course, the critical factor though is exactly where that blocking is sitting uh, in terms of pushing the cold air out. And as it happens over the next sort of week or so at least, um, the blocking isn't going to be in a particularly conducive position to push cold air down into our part of the, uh, of the Northern Hemisphere. But other areas you will think are going to get very cold uh, from that. The NEO observed and forecast is also uh, looking uh, negative. So again, black line shows where we've been with the North Atlantic Oscillation. Red lines at the end where the NEO is being forecast to go. We're around neutral to weekly negative at the moment. Over the next couple of weeks, the GFS ensembles are forecasting that the NEO will uh, remain neutral to uh, weekly negative. So we've got both indexes negative. You would think that that is a pretty good signal to be cold, but actually it's not going to be cold in the next week. It is actually going to be quite mild. This is one of the situations where even with a negative AO, NEO combined, we're still <laughs> going to find ourselves somehow or other bringing in mild weather, or certainly milder than it has been. Been quite cold though, actually, uh, for the first sort of 10 days of December. So the CET provisional up to yesterday, the 9th, is standing at 3.9, which is around 1 degree uh, below average. That's going to lift up over the next week or so, because you're going to be turning milder. So we'll probably in around a week's time see this somewhere into the low fives, I would have thought. Probably be around 5.0, I think, by the time we get to uh like this time uh next week so that's going to lift up a bit but for the first 10 days or so of uh, december it has been quite cold these are the uh gfs upper air temperature no not these are the 500 bill bar height anomaly flow charts from the penn state university uh for the next week 10 days with the ecmwf on the top and <coughs> excuse me i'm a gfs down on the bottom so 500 millibars is there in at high pressure, low pressure, up in mid round. By the jet stream, blue extrapolates to low pressure 
red and orange extrapolates high pressure. So you can see, but with the ECM, we've got below average heights, low pressure coming in from the Atlantic into uh, northern and western Europe. High pressure blocking is being pushed back to the north and also uh, to the east as well. So this is why the AO uh, is, is sort of negative, because we've got this blocking up here. But the way it's all lining up, we're still bringing in sort of mostly mild air, really, from off the Atlantic. Although we're almost on the cold side of the jet stream. We can either get rid of this high just here. That needs to pull off in, push off in that sort of direction. And then the jet stream will go even further southwards, and that would allow this blocking to begin to push the cold air back in from uh, the north. That's how the ECM uh, is looking. This is how the GFS looks. It's very similar. Again, with large amounts of blocking. Look at all this red we've got in the normal latitudes. So we have got a lot of high pressure in the normal latitudes, but just all not quite lining up right to keep us in the cold air. So we bring in like a westerly from off the Atlantic, albeit we're just about going onto the cold side of the jet stream. So it's a very close run thing. Uh, this and and you could envisage that we you know we could get cold quite easily uh, from this, um, but for the time being, like for for the up to like the twentieth of uh, December, it looks like we're staying Atlantic driven and relatively unsettled, but also quite mild. These are the uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So uh, the red line, 30 year upper air temperature average for Coventry. Bit up and down over the next few days. So we've got warmer and cooler sectors alternating uh, with one another. So bit, bit zonal over the next few days. As we go into the second half of December and up towards Chris, that's period just, this period just here, we possibly do see signs of a little bit of a cooling trend, especially uh, as we're moving up towards Christmas. I think there is a little bit of a cooling trend that is in evidence there. And some of these GFS ensemble members are still going very cold, actually, up towards Christmas. The operational GFS, run, I'll show you very shortly, that's this thick green I just here, does become like uh, a warm outlier late on around Christmas. But, but there's an equal number of ensemble members that are actually quite cold. Plenty of precipitation to come as well from beginning to end, so it is going to be unsettled. And I would say unsettled, like uh, running up towards Christmas, and after a mild, uh, mild spell early in the period, possibly starting to get a bit colder as we get closer to Christmas, is, is I would think, like the form horse at the moment. Temperature anomalies from the temp to the 18th December are going to be mild and average, not just for the UK, but for most parts of Europe as well. Precipitation anomalies from the temp to the 18th December are going to be largely wetter than average. Here's the latest wind flow map from EarthNollSchool.net showing that we are about to start introducing westerly winds. So uh, we're in southern, we're in a southerly flow at the moment. Wind is coming up from the south, but we've got all of these westerlies piling in from off the Atlantic just here. And in the next few days, these westerly winds are going to be heading in that direction. So yes, you know, it's going to be much more unsettled. It's going to be an unsettled period coming up. That's how the uh, UK Met is looking for Sunday. Low pressure will be bearing down on the country on Sunday, probably bringing us a spell of wet and windy weather. Monday also looking uh, wet and windy. We keep that low pressure out to the west of the country as we go through to middle next week. Notice heights are rising to the north. We have got uh, heights rising here at 144 hours to the north, but still not able to force the cold air south, so up to like next Wednesday anyway, just these areas of low pressure that will continue to keep wind in from the west and uh, keep us unsettled. This is how the GFS 6Z uh, is looking, so again, uh, Sunday, wet and windy conditions sweeping in from off the Atlantic, that lasting to the early part of next week, that looks like a very intense area of low pressure there on Wednesday, could bring some stormy weather. Uh, and so the weather keeps going into the second half of next week as well. And these low pressures are going on more of a subly trap, though. So as we're moving into the end of next week, this one looks like it could start to pull in some colder air uh, to northern parts of the country. And then we head on up towards day 10, and we keep things unsettled. But eventually, the low pressure clears over to the eastern side of the uh, country, and that starts to allow colder air to begin to dig in uh, from the north. There's the upper air temperature showing that somewhat colder air is now starting to dig in from the north. There's plenty of cold air available, like to the north of us, uh, around Greenland and into, into the Norwegian Sea. So we have got a deep cold pool there. So if we was to get the wind into the north for long enough and far enough north, um, then 
where there is like plenty of cold air to, to tap into there. Uh, what actually happens, though, is that after that brief incursion from the north, low pressure starts to come in from off the Atlantic. So this is like a battle situation. We've got cold air trying to plunge down from the north. These low pressures here are trying to bring mild air in from the southwest. Of course, there will be weather fronts that are going to mark the boundary between the cold and uh, the mild temperatures. So that's the signal for rain. And on the northern edge of that rain, where we're engaging the cold air, uh, then, then, you know, there could be some snow from that. There's the upper air temperatures for Monday the 21st of December, showing that the north is cold, the southwest is relatively mild. In between, where we've got in this green area, that's probably where we've got the outbreaks uh, of rain. We keep this situation going for Tuesday 22nd into Wednesday the 23rd. Again, uh, it's quite interesting, this. We've got cold air desperately trying to get in from the north and from the northeast. Mild air desperately trying to push up from the southwest. There will be a weather front that's in that sort of position. Uh, so, need to be kept, kept a close eye on. There's the upper air temperature. This is the kind of thing that can produce a bit of a snow event. Uh, so, again, the north is cold. The southwest is mild. In between, there's a weather front that marks the boundaries. On that weather front, that, that you could get some snow. And it could go either way, you know, it's one of those situations where, uh, let's go back to this, it's one of those situations where if the energy begins to dig down in that sort of direction, then it will be the cold air that wins that battle. Uh, but if the energy starts to push northwards, then of course, with this ridge over Spain, we're going to start to bring up milder air uh, from the south. But I mean, that's 21st December, it's Christmas Eve Eve, and it is poised between cold and mild. And this is the reason the models have been uh, fluctuating so much uh, just recently that we are on the cusp of some, you know, really quite cold weather, um, but also got my weather down to the southwest. So there is a proper old battle that's going on at the moment for ascendancy. Now, the way the GFS 6Z resolves this is just to push the mild air north. So we get to Christmas Eve and on into Christmas Day, and we're drawing up a very mild southerly with this uh, GFS run. But I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't take that to, to the bank. Like, I wouldn't say that is guaranteed to be the outcome at all. Um... And we'll just have to wait and see. But but this particular GFS run is very mild, actually, on Christmas Day with winds in from the south. And those mild southerlies continue into Boxing Day uh, as well. So it turns very mild across the West of Europe. That will lift temperatures into double digits. But again, I wouldn't be overly confident at all uh, about that being uh, the final outcome. GM looks like this. And uh, again, so uh, we're going to be unsettled through the weekend and on into next week. Low pressure we will be ploughing in from off the Atlantic. Atlantic. And then as we run up towards day 10, we keep things unsettled. Again, the heights are relatively high to our north and to our northeast. But up to day 10, these areas of low pressure in from off the Atlantic that will bring quite a lot of wet weather, actually. And then this is how ECM uh, is looking as well. So that also looks very unsettled over the weekend and into next week, too, with bouts of rain in from off the Atlantic. That looks quite stormy there around days 9 and 10 with this deep area uh, of low pressure. That is sort of pushing in that direction. So that one would also be starting to draw in something a bit colder from the north by day 10, which is the 20th of December. And then, of course, then, of course, as right up towards Christmas, is what happens after that. So we, we introduce the cold air from the north. This low is almost certainly going to start to try and run in from off the Atlantic, but we may also try and raise the heights to the north. So it all looks very, very interesting, I have to say, as we run up to Christmas. And this is on a knife edge. And I, as I said in the live stream last night, I think Christmas is going to keep us guessing uh, for a while longer. Uh, so just keep checking the videos of live streams. Right, this is how the rainfall forecast looks from Tometeo.com for the next 10 days. So you're going to see lots of rain, bands of rain coming and going, plenty of rain piling in from off the Atlantic. And because he's low pressure on a bit of a sunny track at times, it will be cold enough some of that rain to turn wintry in the north. Um, vigorous area of low pressure there in around a week's time. That's bring uh, heavy rain and quite stormy conditions. And as that one clears out of the way, then we start to uh, introduce something a bit colder. So, so more of the rain begins to turn to snow across Scotland and parts of northern England as well. And then heading up towards day 10, there's a suggestion of a little bit of snow coming down into England and Wales as well uh, at this point as we begin to pull in some colder air from the north. That's how it looks. As we get to day 10, we have introduced some colder air from the north, and then we wait and see. That's the 20th of December. We wait and see where things go uh, for Christmas. 
This is the option that's on the table within the ECM Ensembles today for Day 10, which gets us to the 20th of December. Have 51 members, all of them, 51 out of 51 members of the ECM Ensembles with blocking to the north and low pressure underneath it. And of course, exactly where that low pressure sits, how that low pressure uh, engages the blocking will determine whether we are on the mild side of the blocking or whether we are on the cold side of the blocking. In two weeks' time, this gets us to Christmas Day. Can you believe this? Uh, in two weeks' time, uh, 25th of December, 51 out of 51 members of the ECM Ensemble still have blocking to the north around Greenham with low pressure to the south. You would look at that and think we're probably Probably going to be drawing in quite cold air from the north and from the east. Um, so interesting, interesting, interesting how that's shaping up, isn't it? And we'll keep you posted over the coming days. Uh, finally, Beijing Climate Centre surface V2 data. So these are 500 millibar heights bring down to 10 days periods uh, from Beijing Climate Centre. The first 10 days will take us from the 11th to the 20th of December. The uh, coming 10 days will have blocking to the north, low pressure to the south. We should be drawing in quite cold winds uh, from the east. The next 10 day period takes us from the 21st to the 30th of December. Low pressure main to the north. The blocking goes away very rapidly. High pressure builds to the south. And we bring in a much milder Wesley win proper old contrast there between days 1 to 10 and 11 to 20. Uh, the next 10 day period will be the 31st of December, New Year's Eve, to the 9th of January 2021. Uh, below average heights, low pressure to our north winds, probably going on a northwest southeast alignment along with the jet stream. That could be unsettled and a little bit colder, perhaps. And then uh, uh, the next 10 day period, the final 10 day period, is going to be the 10th to the 19th of January. With uh, below average heights, low pressure part right over top of the country. So, obviously, very unsettled and could be a bit on the cool side, although there is no particular blocking signal. So, I'm not sh actually sure what's forcing this low pressure southwards because up here, uh, we expect the low pressure to be centered actually. Um, there's no blocking. So, I'm not quite sure why the jet stream and uh, the trough of low pressure is moving southwards. Uh, but the jet will be through there, that sort of area, really. Um, so, yeah, quite interesting. And uh, and so it could be very unsettling to January. Uh, maybe a bit on the chilly side. So if SB2, uh, finally, so these are 500 millibar heights breaking down into wheat pairs. The first wheat pair takes from the 10th to 16th of December. The current wheat looks unsettled with below average heights, low pressure right over top of the country, combined with northern blocking. But it's all lined up, so that we're actually reasonably mild in week here. Uh, the second week, uh, week two, is the 17th, 23rd of December. High pressure rain to our east and north. Proper blocking again. Low pressure to west, southwest. This will be drawing up a relatively mild southerly wind, you would have thought. Uh, now, the next 10-day period is quite interesting. This is over Christmas. This is 24th, Christmas Eve, to 30th of December. High pressure rain to the centres around Iceland and Greenland. Send your reach down into UK, but you would have thought that's going to be pulling in quite cold air from the northeast, probably. So that could be dry but cold over Christmas. And then all change again for week four, which is uh, the 31st of December to the 6th of January, with high pressure then to our south and low pressure to the north. And winds are going westerly, and that will obviously be uh, milder. So a lot going on there, a lot to keep it on, and we'll be keeping you updated uh, through it all at uh, Gazworthy's. Finally, if, just say, but if you enjoyed the video, then please can you click like, make sure you subscribe to the channel, don't forget to tell your friends about Gazworthy's, and drop us a comment uh, in a moment when you finish watching the video, and let us know what you thought. And that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, we're putting on loads and loads of subscribers at the moment, it's absolutely amazing. And we're going to try and get to 9k subs soon. I don't we'll be able to do it like this side of Christmas and New Year. But but we're certainly going to get to 9k, hopefully, within the next few weeks. So I'm not going to put any targets on it because I get stressed if I make a target. So I'm not going to put a target on it. But hopefully we'll be able to get to 9k. <laughs> and then, of course, the grind goes on to 10k um, after that. Right, that's it for your videos today. Tomorrow we've got a very busy day. Coming up, we've got JMA Fly, we've got a 10 to 14 day. -er. <coughs> Excuse me once again. We've got the ECMWS six weeks forecast. We've got a Christmas update penciled in for tomorrow as well, but whether I'll be able to get that done, I do not know. And we're live streaming uh, from 10 o'clock.
So, going to be an epic Friday, and uh, keep checking back to all of the updates. But for this one, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.